Does anybody know about this? No. Holy shit. They did the autopsy. Whatever happened between you two, that caused her to die. The Department of Justice has found serious problems with the work of a former Calgary pathologist. Did we go after a young mother the way we shouldn't have? It was buried. Why? That's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, Alberta Justice has a lot to answer for. Butch, if I was in your chair, and if I was thinking about all the things that you're thinking about, I'd be scared too. If that was my girlfriend and she died, and I didn't know how I was gonna explain that, I'd be scared. A cop, a murder suspect, and a grueling interrogation. But you guys were scrapping, and she got an injury, and she died because of that injury. What kind of injury is that? Well, that's the part that you need to explain. They did the autopsy. They did the autopsy. Armed with that autopsy report, the police now feel they have truth on their side. Whatever you did to her, whatever happened between you two, that caused her to die. That caused those injuries. That's why we need to talk about that. Because Do I need a lawyer for this? Turns out he did need a lawyer. Others would too. The family of 19-month-old Ayanna Teeple is struggling to come to terms with a new twist in her drowning death, the arrest of her babysitter. 28-year-old Tammy Bouvet is charged with second-degree murder. A man has been charged with the murder of a woman on the Morley Reserve. 25-year-old Butch Chinake was charged with second-degree murder. Shelby Anna Hershack, 18 years, was taken into custody. Herchak is charged with second degree murder in the death of her 26 day old son, Daniel. Three deaths a decade ago, three murder charges, three lives changed forever. And what do they all have in common? They're all linked to the autopsy reports of one medical examiner. But what if what we were told didn't happen that way? Their stories buried and forgotten until now. One expert's opinion doesn't necessarily make something a fact, except in the criminal justice system, it sometimes does. Let's go! Come on! Let's go! Come on! I spent a lot of time with Shelby. Shelby spent a lot of time at my home with my family. She even went on holidays with us. Yeah, she was a big part of our life. Well, I told Shelby when he was born, I told her if she ever needed any help, if anything got beyond her, didn't matter what time, day or night, I would come and get him. Her niece's newborn son was just 26 days old. That's when the call for help came. She was hysterical. She told me she got up and she put him on her chest, right, and fell asleep in the chair downstairs. Did he just fall? She told me that Daniel was on life support. They had done surgery that morning. Could I come? Well, when I walked up, Shelby was laying in the middle of the road, like completely flat out, okay? And just laying there, and she was sobbing. Baby Daniel died in hospital. An autopsy would explain his injuries. The autopsy said that Daniel suffered two injuries. That was really hard because then I'm looking at her, did she hurt him twice? Who am I living with? Who have I got in my house now? Is she really evil? Shelby Anna Hershack, 18 years, the infant's mother, was taken into custody at approximately 2 p.m. on Tuesday, August 24, 2010. She is now charged with second degree murder. Authorities have relied on autopsy results to determine how the baby died. Shelby was labeled a baby killer in newspapers and on social media. Anyone who can take a precious baby's life doesn't deserve a life of their own. And even by her own beloved aunt. It breaks my heart to know that she could have inflicted that kind of damage on a baby. He didn't do anything to deserve that. That critical autopsy was performed by Dr. Evan Matches. 
In just over a year at the Chief Medical Examiner's Office in Alberta, he performed some 262 autopsies. He was able to see what others didn't. But questions arose about some of his autopsies. This is where our investigation begins. So I went to court, as we heard about these allegations against this doctor. So yeah. I wanted to see what his background was. Alberta Justice ordered a review of 14 cases done by Dr. Matches. A panel of experts was brought in to examine his work. We found the expert's report buried in the Calgary courthouse. So, you know, this case, for example, uh, it showed that the manner of death was unreasonable, so it was the cause of death and other opinions. Unreasonable. Unreasonable. And so. And that's I, their term terminology to say he got it wrong. Yeah, and so unreasonable doesn't just mean a difference of opinion. They mean a reasonable pathologist in this situation should not have come to this conclusion. And what does that suggest to you? What it suggests to me is that there is a significant problem with the work that was done by Dr. Matches. Dr. John Butt is one of Canada's preeminent medical examiners. Descriptions are not satisfactory, the cause of death is not satisfactory, the manner of death is not satisfactory, and other opinions are not, that are expressed are not reasonable. This case um, has three check marks that are, are mean good and three check marks that are bad. In other words, not reasonable. Mm -hmm. That means the manner of death is incorrect mm -hmm. or believed to be incorrect. The cause of death is believed to be incorrect, i.e. unreasonable, and there was no charge laid in that case. Correct. If he got it wrong for those who died, what impact did that have on the lives of those left behind? This beautiful backdrop can't hide some ugly scars. Back in 2011, Charmaine Wesley was found dead in her bed in this house. Her boyfriend, Butch Chinike, made the tragic discovery. Investigators that day noted an empty pill bottle raises concern of OD. Their report also states, Wesley told her parents she had been in a car accident and struck her face on the steering wheel. Maybe how that happened is when we got into that crash there on the way back on the house, on the trail, on that, on that road there, we walk and she would... No, no, no. Well, the main concern that we had is the deceased had suffered a car accident or was involved in a car accident. And what was Dr. Matches's opinion on that? His opinion was that the type of injury, if it occurred as part of the car accident itself, that she would have had significant signs, she would have been dying at the scene of the car accident, that that type of brain bleed could not have persisted. So today you were arrested for murder. After Dr. Matches completed his autopsy, the RCMP arrested Butch. She died because of the fight. A fight? A fight? We, never, we didn't fight. Well, come on now. They did the autopsy. They did the autopsy. Dr. Matches said Charmaine Wesley suffered blunt head trauma inflicted by another person. The bottom line is, you did it. You guys had a fight. Somehow you hurt her. What we need to figure out is, did you mean to hurt her? Did you hurt her on purpose? Or was it just something that got out of control? Just something that happened, an accident. Either you did it on purpose, or it was an accident. Who was the accident? Like, not I didn't do. Are you sure? I didn't do on purpose. Good. Like, I didn't remember fighting her though. But like, so what? And then from the aut, like from the from the mm -hmm. um, autopsy. Autopsy and. This is the power of the medical examiner's report. Even the accused begins to waver. To the police, it was a confession. Backed into a corner. Butch took a plea for manslaughter. And, and at that stage then, you thought that, as far as you were concerned, this case was closed and the matter was over. Once, once the 
the client has accepted the offer, yep. resolved the offer, has been sentenced, uh, the file is closed. But we discovered Dr. Match's autopsy of Charmaine Wesley was reviewed by that panel of experts. And here's what they determined. Her severe injuries could indeed be the result of a motor vehicle collision. Exactly what Butch first said. And then a bombshell. The conclusion of homicide is not adequately supported. This is a report that we have obtained. This, in, in fact, this is the first time I've seen this. This is the first time I've seen a peer review saying that there were errors done. Now we have concern that the actions of your client did not lead to the death of the deceased. It's no longer a homicide. In the end, Butch would serve more than three years in prison while Alberta Justice had that report. Welcome to our storage facility. Wow. So this is the uh, storage locker where we have over uh, 10 years of files. Holy cow. That are all boxed up uh, by number. So Butch's lawyer double checked his case files in this storage locker looking for a copy of that report. So if you receive something from Alberta Justice, pertinent to your case, it should be here. That's right, that's right. We've looked and we haven't found any other uh, correspondence and especially the, uh, the peer review. But what does this suggest to you, the fact that you haven't seen this? I think who you really need to ask is the Attorney General's office and the Crown's office of why they didn't disclose this. Why wasn't it disclosed? Top officials at Alberta Justice were aware of the review. Internal emails show Alberta Justice knew it must disclose to the defense what we know. The deputy is particularly concerned about whether there is someone in prison. It's really hard in there, like it's really bad, like the guards are really bad in there. I'm scared, I'm a native, like, I'm, like people are after me, like trying to like kill me. And... We found Butch living back on the stony First Nation. His hat hides the scars of a beating he says happened here after his release from prison. In his own community, he's still branded a murderer. People, a lot of people out there hate me. Now I can't, can't trust nobody. Like it's hard for me to live more, live with my life. So this is the document I found at the courthouse. It's a review of the first doctor's work, okay, of the autopsy. And it has very different opinions than what that first doctor said. The conclusion of homicide is not adequately supported. Can't believe it, like, this is... <laughs> so after this came out, you spent years in jail. Mm -hmm. Something that I didn't do, right, like what I've been saying. I've been trying, like, I've been honest, right? Like, I've been telling everybody this is not me. I didn't kill her, right? What I would want the government to know is that you've taken away five years of my brother's life and I know his innocence and I know that this, this isn't, and th this wasn't fair. It's hurtful and it's angry knowing that they could have said something a long time ago, but they kept it, you know, they kept it secret, I guess, secretive. And uh, certainly I've been involved in a number of cases where people have been put in jail for crimes that never happened. And the cause has almost invariably been uh, erroneous opinions by forensic pathologists or medical examiners who, who did the original autopsies in those cases. James Lockyer works with Innocence Canada, a legal team that has helped exonerate 23 people after exposing miscarriages of justice. I think that, that there's a, there has been and, and, and still is a culture uh, amongst uh, forensic pathologists and medical examiners to think dirty. And by that I mean they approach 
uh, a suspicious case, if you will, as they call it, from the point of view of it's a homicide unless it's proved otherwise, when it really should be the other way around. Today, Herchek was handed a five and a half year sentence. Prosecutors were pushing for a stiffer sentence, eight years. Remember Shelby Herchak? Sent to prison for killing her baby boy. His autopsy was also reviewed by that expert panel. The 22-year-old is getting credit for time already in custody. She now has a two and a half year sentence left to serve. She gets extra credit, she gets time served. I would have liked to see seen eight years. Shelby's aunt hasn't spoken to her niece in years. To the police, Dr. Match's autopsy suggested a pattern of abuse. We showed her what the expert review panel said. Because it says, we do not agree that this represents a previous injury of seven to 15 days duration. And if there was no prior injury, could it have been a tragic event? If, if Shelby were here right now, what would you say to her reading that, knowing that? Well, I would tell her that I was sorry because I believe that. I mean, I looked at my niece differently. I looked at her like she was a murderer. Did we go after a young mother the way we shouldn't have? Because after what I was told and what I've now found out, I'm thinking I judged her really harshly. It breaks my heart, actually. Should this information have been disclosed to? Of course it should. They're not even, you don't even have to think about it. It's not the question you have to give any thought to at all. Uh, it's, uh, uh, if it wasn't disclosed, and I understand it, it wasn't, uh, and, it, and if it wasn't, uh, then uh, Alberta Justice has a lot to answer for. When we come back, we find Shelby. I want to show you something. This is something that I'm sure you've never seen and should have been shown to you a long time ago. So this is a case of an infant um, who died very young. How old was the baby? Two and a half months. We're looking into autopsies done by the medical examiner, Dr. Evan Matches. Back in 2012, an expert panel in Alberta raised serious concerns about his work in 14 cases. So how did you track this family down? Well, she has a very unique name. Yeah. So I looked it up and I found her obituary. So you got a number for her? Sure do. Yeah, Mark Kelly from Hi, the Fifth Mark. Estate. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I, I'm, I'm good. This case dates back to August 2010, when a Calgary mom cuddled with her baby in bed, then noticed her baby wasn't breathing. We're contacting all the people that we can find whose names were on this list, whose cases were reviewed. Okay, so can you guys come to the house tomorrow at 7 p.m.? Yes. Dr. Match's autopsy indicates the baby was inadvertently smothered as she slept next to her mother. The child's mother, we'll call her Tracy, asked that her identity be concealed to protect her family's privacy. When there's a suggestion that you, as a loving mother, that somehow you played a role in your child's death, what does that do to you? It's taken me down to suicide, it's taken me down to alcoholism, it's taken me down to drug use. You blame yourself for your child's death? Yes, absolutely. But the expert panel said Dr. Matches got the cause and manner of death wrong. We do not agree there's sufficient information to support smothering as a cause of death, which meant Tracy didn't have to feel responsible for her daughter's death. I blame myself for years, years. I was never told this. How dare the government never tell me about this? The panel of three expert pathologists met here in Edmonton for two days in November 2012. Their findings then delivered to Alberta Justice. The Department of Justice has found serious problems with the work of a former Calgary pathologist. All murder cases in which Dr. Match's work was relied upon will be getting a second look. According to Alberta Justice, there were people in prison whose liberty may hinge on this. 
People like Butch Chinake. He went to jail for manslaughter and the death of his girlfriend. Yet neither he nor his lawyer were shown the expert's review that might have freed him. And that's the real sad thing, because now this is something that's happened in the past. You're not going to get this person's period of incarceration back. We showed him all the expert panel reports. Not all 14 cases, though, were homicides. The panel disagrees in this case. They said he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, they think he got it wrong. Manner of death, cause of death, you get the point. So, why am I seeing this for the first time today? This is what I want to know from you. This is, um, this is a significant uh, difficulty that has to be addressed with the government. It just has to be. We wanted to know whatever happened to Shelby Herchak. She's the teen mom the media dubbed a baby killer when she was charged in the death of her infant son. So, this is my son. This is Daniel Wayne Herchak. He was born on July 14th and passed away August 9th, 2010. I wrote this when I was uh, in prison. Um, it says, never let go of the love, never let go uh, of a happy birthday without a song. Never be shy to cry, but always remember my memory. Shelby admits she struggled with drinking and drugs as a teenager, but then she got pregnant. So I got clean. Um, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, started taking care of myself. Family relationships got better. I wanted to be mom. Like since I was little, I had this little baby doll and I would, you know, I was, <clears throat> I wanted to be a mom for my whole life. But when her son was just 26 days old, he suffered a fatal head injury. After the police got Dr. Match's autopsy, a death became a murder. I did not kill my son. It was an accident. I dropped him. How did it feel for you though? to be hearing what this medical examiner uh, is saying ab about you. All the stuff that he said, the judge and the jury would have believed him over anything that I said. So two days before my trial was supposed to begin, I took a plea for manslaughter. But when you took that plea, you agreed to what the medical examiner had said about you, mm -hmm. that you had previously abused your child. Mm -hmm because I didn't know what to do and I just, I gave up. I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want to go to jail for life. We know from wrongful conviction cases in Canada, uh, we know that people pleaded guilty to crimes they didn't commit uh, because they were facing a murder charge. And so to avoid the potential life sentence, took a plea to a lesser crime for a shorter sentence. The experts reviewed Dr. Match's autopsy of baby Daniel. Everyone agreed he died from a blunt trauma to the head. But Dr. Matches went a step further, saying he detected prior injury. I want to show you something. And this is something that I'm sure you've never seen and should have been shown to you a long time ago. So this is his, this is their review, three experts reviewing his work. We do not agree this represents a previous injury of seven to 15 days duration. So when they were looking at Daniel, the results of Daniel, mm. they, what they were saying is they don't see any previous signs of abuse. That what he said was true was a mistake. What? Have you ever been told about the existence of this? No, so where did that piece of paper go? 
when I was in court. It was supposed to be shown to your lawyer. It was supposed to be shown to you. This information was supposed to be disclosed. That piece of paper changes a lot. And this information, for what we have been able to find, has never been made public. It was never given to the defense, and it was never given to the accused. It was buried. Why? That's what we're trying to figure out. That's kind of messed up. Shocking. What do you want us to do? I want that medical examiner to deal with what he did wrong. So all this begs the question, where is Dr. Evan Matches now? By the time the expert's review came out, he had already left Alberta. Four outstanding cases. He now works in the U.S. as an expert pathologist for hire. Tonight, investigators pouring over material taken during the raid of the Lubbock County Medical Examiner's Office. His company was contracted to run the Medical Examiner's Office in Lubbock, Texas. Last year, the FBI raided his office there. Several law enforcement agencies executing search warrants at the ME's building this afternoon. There were explosive allegations Dr. Matches was removing body parts for research without consent. He denies it. No charges have been laid. Investigators literally carted out materials from the Lubbock County Medical Examiner's Office Monday afternoon. He runs his company out of this building north of San Diego. We contacted him for an interview, but he declined to speak with us on camera. Hi, how are you? My name is Mark Kelly. I'm with uh, Canadian Television. I'm looking for Dr. Matches. Where would he be? But he's not here. They say he's not here, and even if he were, they have no comment. Through his lawyer, Dr. Matches sent a statement to the Fifth Estate. It says, in part, I stand by my work, adding, local politics and personal vendettas have created controversy where none should have existed. In 2014, he sued Alberta's Minister of Justice, the Attorney General, the three members of the expert panel, even his former boss at the medical examiner's office. The $30 million defamation suit has not been settled. He says Alberta justice has ruined his career. But at the end of the day, from my perspective, Matches is not the important player here. Uh, the important players, if I can put it that way, are the people who may have been convicted of crimes they didn't commit because of what's happened here. In 2013, Dr. Matches demanded that Alberta Justice toss out the expert panel findings. He said they were based on incomplete information and he wasn't given time to respond. Alberta Justice agreed and a judge quashed the results. But Alberta Justice also said justice demands a second review be done to ensure there were no wrongful convictions. Next week in our investigation, Alberta abandons its probe into miscarriages of justice. My understanding now is that the Justice Department swept this whole thing under the rug. And so, I mean, that is, in my opinion, that's a corruption. To quote uh, the Alberta Justice, they say, the findings of the external panel review are inconsequential. How is that? How is that? How can you possibly say that? Just shame on them for not, uh, you know, doing their uh, job right and that. Oh, it's taken, it's taken everything from me. My freedom, my, my whole self, everything. What can you do to look into a buried report that may represent a serious miscarriage of justice? We've been trying to share this information with your office now for months.